Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, the custom on occasions such as this is to comment and reflect on the life, service and contribution of the person who has passed away. But when the person is someone who, head and shoulders above all others, strode and dominated the public stage for a time beyond the adult life of all of us who sit in this house, it's a daunting task and one that uh, no eloquence or command of detail could in truth and with fairness accomplish. Ian Paisley was a remarkable man whose long career in public life has left an indelible mark upon all of us who knew him. Like so many, I was drawn towards politics by the clarity, the certainty, the strength and the conviction of his message. The big man, as he was known, provided firm and decisive leadership when unionism lacked it most and when it needed it most. The stage for his oratory ranged from the lofty debating chambers of the Mother of Parliaments and the European Parliament to countless halls and meeting rooms across the land. He was as much at home speaking on top of a wooden crate or on a lorry platform in an open field as he was from the green or red benches at Westminster. Yet he had a special place in his heart for this chamber. Whether on the opposition benches or as First Minister on this side, he loved Stormont. He could energize and inspire those around him like no other person I had met before or have met since. He loved Ulster and her people, and they returned that love and trust by repeatedly lifting him to the top of the pole in North Antrim and then giving him pole-topping success in five consecutive Northern Ireland-wide European elections. He had a sincere interest in people's problems, no matter who they were or whether their problems were large or small. There are multitudes that have been touched by individual acts of kindness carried out away from the gaze of the media or the public. For most of his life, Ian was blessed to have Eileen by his side, whether he was battling in the valley or marching on the mountain top, she gave him decades of love and support. At this sad time, our prayers are with Baroness Paisley, her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He was as special to them as they were to him, for his was a close and loving family circle. Those of us who knew him best will remember the fun and joy it was to be in his company. But today we close the page on a long and glorious era, and already politics seems a little less colourful and exciting. Ian has taken his place in the chronicles of Ulster history alongside the greats of unionism, making our heritage even richer. As a leader of men, a friend of the people, a servant of the state, and the undisputed leader of unionism, Ian Paisley outclassed all around him. Ulster will never see the like of him again. He was an exceptional human being. He had a loyal heart, a fidelity to freedom, a passion for democracy, and a love for public service. In the storm, he was oak and granite, and in the sunshine, he radiated passion and commitment. Ian's faith shaped his entire life. We will never know this side of eternity just how many thousands of lives were changed through his preaching and witness. In a sermon he once preached entitled Five Minutes After Death, he said, if you read that Ian Paisley is dead, don't believe it, for I'll be more alive than ever and singing like I've never sung before. Those of us who stood beside him when he did sing will know how blessed a hope that is. <laughs> but I was present when Ian made what was probably his final major speech at an event in Hillsborough Castle when he, along with the Deputy First Minister and I, were awarded the International Ellis Island Medal of Honour. Though his strength was waning and he moved slowly to the platform, his message displayed the clarity of his mind and the certainty 
of his convictions. He told of a time when he knelt at the feet of the Savior of the world and received eternal life. He told us that it was this that had driven him all his years and would drive him through the gates of eternity to the land that is fairer than day, where wars will be no more, where darkness shall surrender to eternal light, and where we will sit in the majesty of God himself. He pronounced that in Northern Ireland we were moving in the right direction. And though we were facing significant problems, he encouraged us all to complete the journey. He expressed the hope that future generations would be able to live in peace and urged us to do our bit to reach that goal. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, he no longer sits among us, but we are entrusted with his legacy, and we are stirred by his injunction to finish the course and do our bit in securing lasting peace and stability for the land he loves so much. Thank you. And